Hello all, we're gonna, today we're going to have an exciting, um, an exciting lesson. Well, I don't know if it's exciting. <laughs> it's actually one the Lord wants to have. And uh, I kind of don't want to do it, but I have to be faithful. So he asked me to do this this morning, and uh, I'm going to do it. What prompted this was last night, extending well beyond my bedtime, the Lord had me sit down and write about intercessory prayer. Because there's a lot of things going on in our nation today where you got a lot of people coming together to pray, which is a wonderful thing. Don't, don't misunderstand. It's a great thing to do. But we have to understand the difference between praying and intercession. They're not the same. You cannot just pray and expect it to be an intercession prayer that would actually goes into the spirit realm and changes things like Daniel. Daniel's was an intercessor, an intercession prayer. So I wrote all of this last night and I went to bed a little troubled because um, it's, it's critical. It's a little bit critical of what's going on. But God is a little bit critical of what's going on and he just wants people to understand. So if we put the truth out there, then he says they, they have the option to hear and then to do what you want to do with it. But I'm going to put it out here and you don't have to criticize me or do whatever. You can just take it, throw it away. But this is what God gave to me over this past two days. And I have sat trying to put it all together to share it with you. Because it troubled me greatly as I was writing in my book. And I went to bed asking the Lord to confirm to me that what I wrote in that book last night was indeed of the Holy Spirit. Because I knew it was because he kept me up so late to do it and he wouldn't let me stop until I finished. So I know what it was. But I still wanted that wet fleece. I wanted that final confirmation that what I wrote was indeed what God was saying. So we're going to go so around some materials today. This isn't just going to be a nugget like we're used to the nuggets. This is going to be a little deeper because I have to read you what I wrote. That's what started this whole process. Well, we have now turned the corner on yet another year and have crossed into 2019, still being processed through my journey. Our prayer call resumed on Wednesday, January 2nd. It was a bit off as some had not returned from their holiday travels. At the beginning, it was just myself and one other person who was not a regular. And for some reason, she was fretting that there were not oodles of people on the call. So in her desire to control and conform, she began to tell me how if I would but change my platform, timing, and don't have any fellowship, I'd get more people. And if I would be like everyone else and conform to a 30-minute call, people would come. No one wants to just listen to you talk, Christina, nor do they want to waste time in fellowship. And if they do, then those can stay after the call and talk. So just open the call, pray for 20 minutes, and hang up. The actual fact here is that I'm not just talking. I'm teaching as the Lord has asked. I usually have something the Lord has given me, and that is what sets our theme. But she is not there often enough to even know what we do. Okay, so that being said, I recognized immediately what that was. And that's spiritual warfare trying to come against what I'm doing, what God is asking me to do. And there's nothing the enemy likes better than to try to flip you off of what God asked you to do. Now, this is my issue, what I just read. Because these calls that are going on are just that. They're 30-minute calls. You may get 20 minutes to pray. By the time you come on and go off, you may get 20 minutes. Now, I don't know of any movement in the Holy Spirit that happens like that. But nonetheless, so now we are such an instant microwave society. This is acceptable. Jump on a call, 20 minutes. I prayed. I'm good. I'm good. I interceded. No, you didn't. You outer court prayed. And I'm going to tell you up front right now, the devil is not afraid of an outer court prayer. It carries no power. 
It's just a surface prayer. It's praying for surface issues, natural itch issues. It's not going deep. You cannot go deep in 20 minutes when everybody's on the phone doing whatever. It's, it's just not. I, I think it's great that they're coming together to pray. But let's call it what it is. These are prayer calls. They are not intercessors. And that's what they want to be. I know, but they've got to go through the process and they haven't gone through the process and they're not want, willing to be processed. They're not even willing to be learned. I've had a couple that have come on to mine that have left because it's just too hard. It's just too, it's just too intense, Christina. So, okay. Now, I will never change my platform, but nonetheless, I had to share with her the facts. And again, I will not be flipped. I know what, I, what the Lord has asked me to do. And so what we do, God has asked me to teach, teach these people that are on my call. He asked me to start a call where there's freedom of movement of the Holy Spirit. Where we honored him, not with just words, but we lift a cup of blessing to honor him before we begin. We seek his heart before we start. We invite the spirit to join and lead us as he wills, and that we pray into what is on Abba's heart, not our own. We ask the Lord to cleanse us, to wash us before we even come into his presence. We allow ourselves that time. We do some praise and worship. We Invite God's presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it's amazing then how all of our prayers, prayers then flow into one another with God's heart often in a travail for the situation. Now we'll get back to that in a minute, what a travail is. It's powerful. We do praise and worship as the Spirit leads and it just sets the tone. So now you can literally see the difference. If we were like everyone else, by the time we finished with our beginning worship, the others would have already long hung up and been gone. And we're just getting into the Holy Spirit. We're feeling the presence of God coming down on us, covering us. We're feeling now that we're in his presence and now we can go forward. And so we're just finishing up that the beginning and they've already prayed, come, gone, Set free to enjoy the rest of their day is how they end their calls. But we set no time. The Holy Spirit moves as long as the Holy Spirit wants to move. When he's done, the call is done. I don't care if it's three hours. Three hours later, we'll end the call. That's exactly what's going on here. That's intercession. When you are willing to go where the Spirit takes you deep into a situation, where you travail and you cry, and make utterances, believe me. <laughs> and then he wants me to teach these people. I'm, I'm to teach, I'm to do. There's a purpose to this call. There isn't just get on, pray, and get off. God has a purpose. God does nothing without purpose. Nothing without purpose, a pattern, a plan, and orderly. There's nothing orderly about any of these other calls either. 